Uh, I'd like to talk to you about Isaiah chapter 8. Uh, I, this chapter really blessed me as I was reading it as a warning. Uh, most of remember I told you going into this, these are going to be some tough times in some of these scriptures. Amen? Uh, because a lot of them are warnings. A lot of them are um, really challenging to our sensibilities in the spirit because we know that these times feel very familiar. This is somewhere about six to seven hundred years before Christ. So let's say that's about twenty six to twenty seven hundred years ago that these prophecies were told. But the this is now foretold uh, for foreknowledge for now. Uh, prophecy. Can I say this without? Yeah. I will say it. Well, I guess I got to say it uncensored. Prophecy today is not about what you can get from God. Prophecy today is a what God is telling you to do to get in order with God. So if you start hearing the prophecies about what God is getting ready to give you, right? recognize that that is uh encouragement not necessarily prophecy because prophecy right now is getting you in line with god so uh when uh you hear that what god is saying uh a lot of times it don't feel so good prophecy don't and isaiah is a proof and so is jeremiah and so is ezekiel as we go through some of these prophets obadiah i mean his whole thing is like doom and gloom but uh uh as we go through uh the the, the prophets you'll see that the prophecies were to get you straight so that yes you'll be in line to receive the blessings of god but it's first in order to get you where you need to be in the spirit in order to receive it right it, 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 if i jump over your nasty lifestyle to what you're gonna get from god i'm not doing a job as a pastor bishop whatever you want to call me today prophet whatever because what what i've allowed you to think is that you don't have to do anything to get in line with god in order to get the blessings of god and that's out of order uh that that is uh that is not biblical anywhere prophecy should be able to be checked against a biblical principle in the word so uh when you hear people say hey come up here getting this 500 dollar line this thousand dollar line and this uh uh two thousand dollar line and this is the prophecies you're gonna get that's out of order and that's not biblical and that's not real we need to stop chasing the big show and, and, and start chasing a big God. All right? Uh, I'd rather have 20 sold out soldiers for God than 200 filled seats of people that just uh, church goers. You'll get so much more done with a few of sold out soldiers for God than you will for 200, 300, 400 church goers. That's why, that's, that's what changed the world, those uh, 12. And even they had issues. Right? So let's whittle them down a little bit. When it was time for, for God to get supernatural revelation, Right? He only took three. Right? He left the others down there. And the mothers, they couldn't do nothing. Because when he came right down from the hill, right down from the Mount of Transfiguration, what happened? We, we, we went to your, your disciples and we couldn't, we, he couldn't get delivered. Our, my son could not get delivered. And that's when God teaches about um, you see, some of these things must come out by prayer and fast and then he delivers the boy right on the spot what i'm saying is 
God is about to expand Glory Bar Fellowship, but it's going to be the sold out soldier type. Right? And, and let me help you out. They, uh, when they get here, don't mean they're going to be saved. Uh, I'm going to help you right now. When they get here, don't mean they're going to be saved. What that means is uh, they're not going to be tainted with uh, previous uh, uh, teachings either. They're going to be sold out because they're going to get converted for real and they're going to be sold out for Jesus. And, and then we're going to have uh, those, that, the 200 that will be here will be so powerful in the spirit that God will make a difference like never before through them. Right. And so then we won't have to prophesy cars and houses because they already have them because they're in line with God. You'll see people tra be transformed before your eyes. That's why uh, I want to us to be evangelists to the deepest point. What I mean is I want us to be searching the, the lowest of the low. Get deeper in our fishing. All right, and, and when we pull them out, they don't, they not tainted with all the junk that come from different ministries that that we've we've gained different knowledge. It's not all bad. Don't don't get me wrong, but there's some stuff that you get, get gain along the way that you might have to unlearn. They don't have to do that. They just have to grow, uh, come up. Ooh, they they learn to swim and off they run. Amen, amen. So let's uh, 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 that uh, Isaiah eight. When you got it, say amen. Look what it said. Moreover, the Lord said unto me, take thee a great roll and write it in with a man's pen concerning my hair, Shalah Hashbaz. That's a mouthful. And I took unto me faithful witnesses to record Uriah the priest and Zechariah the son of Jeberechiah. And I went unto the prophetess, and she conceived. I did that too way back when. <laughs> uh, that's adult. We we are all adults in a row. <laughs> you know, in the NLT, it said, "Then I slept with my wife, yeah. and she became pregnant yeah. and gave birth to a son." Yeah, but we didn't. But we didn't name. We didn't name his. We didn't name him Mahir. Shalah has boss. Thank God. Woo, that would have been <laughs> poor boy would have had a <laughs> would have had some challenges going forward, <laughs> especially with the name means <laughs> that that name though, is a struggle. In the complete Jewish Bible, it says Adonai said to me, "Take a large tablet and write it on write on it in easily readable letters." Maher Shalaz has boss. The spoils hurries, the prey speeds along. That's his name. That's what that name means. Yep, swift to plunder and quick to carry it away. Yep. Uriah the Kohen, which is the priest, Zechariah the son of Yer Yervert Haya. Then I had sexual relations with my wife. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son. And Adonai said to me, name him Maher Shalah Hasbaz. Because before the child knows how to cry, Abba and Emma, daddy and mommy, the riches of Damascus and the spoils of Sharam will be carried off and given to the king of Asher. I'm talking, this is something, this is a powerful prophecy of what it will look like as we start to see the transition from being in charge to being taken over. God's word does not fall void. Even before we see it happen, it has already started to happen. I'm back in the King James. It says, but for before the child shall have knowledge to cry. My father and my mother, the richest of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria shall be taken away before the king of Assyria. 
The Lord spake also unto me, saying, For as much as this people refuses the water of Shiloh, that go softly and rejoice in resin and Remaliah's son. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord bringeth up, up upon them the waters of the river, strong and many, even the king of Assyria and all his glory. He shall come up over all his channels and go over all his banks. And he shall pass through Judah. He shall overflow and go over. He shall reach even to the neck and stretching out of his wings shall fill the breath of thy land. O Emmanuel, God with us. Let's read that from the NLT. I, I, I love, I, I wish I could romanticize the way Isaiah did of situations and circumstances like he does. He's just such a, his writings or his, whoever wrote it on his behalf really take us to such a, a, a level of depth that it puts us right like we were right there in the middle of the water as it's going higher and higher. And just like a, the king of Assyria thought he had it, we start to see that even the water rushes over him. Who's got it? Anybody got a microphone? Sister Kiara's got the purple mic. She's going to read in the NLT. She's going to read five through eight. It's on your screen. Oh, good. And it's on her screen. Is it on? Purple mic. Thank you. Then the Lord spoke to me again and said, we care for the people of Judah is like the gently flowing waters of Shiloh, but they have rejected it. They are rejoicing over what will happen to King Rezin and King uh, Pekka. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the Lord will overwhelm them with a mighty flood from the Euphrates River. The king of Assyria in all his glory, this flood will overflow all its channels and sweep into Judah until it is chin deep. It will spread its wings, submerging your land from one end to the other. O oh, Emmanuel. Mm. That is deep waters. The message says, God spoke to me again, saying, because this people has turned its back on the gentle flowing stream of shallow and gotten all excited over resin and the son of Ramalia. They've got, they got all happy. With their new partnership. I'm stepping in. God is saying. And facing them with the wild floods of Euphrates. The king of Assyria and all his fanfare. A river in flood. Bursting its banks. Pouring into Judah. Sweeping everything before it. Water up to your necks. A huge wingspan of a raging river. O Emmanuel, spreading, spreading across your land. That's a warning against a partnership that's unequally yoked. We don't look at it that way. We just look like, okay, I'm a, I'm a neighbor, my neighbors. Let's partner together because we're neighbors. But they don't think like we think. They don't know like we know. Why would you have to partner with somebody other than a loving God? Especially when you are in possible end of your line because you're getting ready to be overtaken. All right? You're getting ready to be in captivity. You almost are willing to be partner with your captive than to partner with God. It's almost like sleeping with the enemy. When the good God is, wait, is waiting for you just to give him a hug. I, I, I don't get it. Why us in the body of Christ would rather go outside the body of Christ to find love 
to find relations, to find partnerships, when if we stay inside the body of Christ, floods won't happen. Calamity won't happen. Relationships then will be strong because y'all are loving the same God. Y'all are thinking the same way. Y'all are doing the same things. The reason why we get in trouble is because we are not patient enough to wait for love to walk through the door of the body of Christ. Emotionally, we hit a, a personal clock, that we, a timetable we put on ourselves. But God's, God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. A year is but a thousand days, a thousand days but a year. He can speed up time, slow it down, do whatever he need to do to get you in the right place at the right time, at the right season for the right man or the right woman if you are willing to wait. Go ahead. Pastor, I, want to, um, I also want to say, and then we have to use discernment because, you know, now we got, you know, people come to the church with wrong motives. You know, they're looking for... Because they know that, okay, the good church, the church women, they just ready to want to, you know, marry quickly or what have you. And so that's the reason why you bring whoever that is so that the man or woman of God can discern, you know, because you, you may miss it because you, you head over heel. And we have seen that over time and time, even when individuals say, oh, I think this person. And we're like, nah, something, mm -mm. this that, nope, this is not the one. I mean, this, the situation right now that's affecting the body of Christ with the, that, you know, that is, for, that is like right here where the young lady, we know that young lady. We knew her who married this, in the, in this individual, somebody, and, and, and so now you have people in the world and that's showing the picture and say, you mean to tell me, here's was a prophet and here was the pastor and nobody knew that this man had an issue that it, we all of a sudden now, and, and so the pastor's saying, we didn't see anything. Listen, we got some good couples in this congregation, but I cannot stand here and, and tell you, oh, they, we never, they just, they just so lovey-dovey all the time. They never have an agreement. That's a lie from the pits of hell. But that's what they on national TV saying, how dumb of you then, what discernment do you have? And so we as women of God and men of God, we have to also, God gives us spirit of discernment. And when we see things that are out of line with God, we need to, you know, don't just jump and just go with it. Investigate it. He showed it to you for a reason. And, and we're talking about we're supposed to be people of faith. And Pastor Allen said something with faith and patience are power twins. Many people miss this with faith. You, it may take, when you wait for faith, it may take longer, but you'll keep it. But when you jump out ahead of God and then you call it God, then he got to come in and try to fix that. So many times I see individuals that we got to understand, yes, the just shall live by faith, but we miss the peace on patience because they work hand in hand together. The same thing, pastor talking about prophecy. God will speak and give prophecy, but maybe there's a time factor in there. Amen. You have a microphone. Uh, yeah, this is good stuff. Go ahead. It's green mic. Ishmael. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. green mic. Uh, say that again. We need to hear it on tape. It's, it's on. It's on now. Green mic. Ishmael. Ishmael, yes. We know the fact, right? Uh, God, the, the, the son of the promise hadn't come yet. So what do we do? We rush the promise. We, well, God don't need our help. Right? Uh, we need to be like, um, what's the guy? I know he passed, but uh, uh, the, the, the infomercial guy. We used to be, we need to be like the Ronco guy. Right? Right? The Ronco had a wonderful, in, the Ronco oven, right? Where you would set it and forget it. When we're waiting on God to, uh, to we're not waiting on God. We, uh, we're getting our spirit in line with what God's prophecy is, right? It may take some time for us to get there, right? Set it and forget it. Because if you try and go and look, you know, we, we, we like we're cooking turkey, right? You got to go look at it every now and then and baste it and, and help it along, right? The Ronco, you don't have to do that. It just cooked itself, right? We got to stop looking at God's work 
and instead of just waiting for the product to, to happen. Right? He don't need our help. He's doing it on his time. What, what he, what he, it, it, only thing he needs you to do is thank him for it. You start thanking for him producing the victory in advance. That's the faith that it takes. Habakkuk said, uh, write the vision, make it plain, all right, so that people can see it and run with it. The vision will not, uh, though it tarry, wait on it, though it won't tarry very long, all right? The issue is the, from the, the, the wait on it, though it won't tarry very long, what are y'all doing in the middle of it? We got a, a, a yellow mic first, then... Yellow than gray. Go ahead. It's on. Don't do that. We don't do that. Yes. You're, you're, okay, go ahead. Yes, I agree. Okay. Um, uh, Prophet is talking about faith. Reminded me at House of Mercy, GBFIC Outreach, there's a sign when you walk in right next to the ladies' bathroom that says, persistence gets, gets you what you want. Consistency, get, uh, consistency allows you to keep what you got. Mm. Um, and it reminded me, Faith is about consistency. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, it, what, all of this that we're sharing just makes me think of in that waiting time, instead of just being like, okay, God, how about now? You know, there's deliverance that needs to take place in each of us. And any person that, you know, can sit here and say, well, I'm just waiting for my godly husband to come along. or I'm waiting for God to do this and do that. But they're not willing to let God show them themselves, then first of all, you got pride. So even if there's absolutely nothing else going on, you know, there's still that to be dealt with. You know, you don't have to wait for a deliverance meeting yeah. to, you know, just, just get, know, know them that labor among you and let them know you. There's, I mean, get to the point yeah, where yeah, you're not I, trying I'm going to stop hide. you right there because this is actually, the text starts to transition to that. All right. It, it, the, the Isaiah 8 he smoothly transitions from uh, what you expect to see and how your enemies are plotting against. How many people know your enemy right now is plotting against each and every one of you? Look to the same neighbor. I don't know your enemies, but he's plotting against you. And I'm going to call him a man because just because, right? I mean, uh, he's, uh, the enemy is uh, founded in Satan and his imps, right? Uh, they're asexual beings. I don't know what they are, but I'm going to call it a male just because, right? Us men, we are dirty, so I'm going to put it on us. Uh, there is an all and out plot against you saints in the body of Christ. I want you to understand that it, it, whatever you feel is an open door, guess what? It is. So if it's your children, you need to, to close that door. If it's uh, your job, I'm not telling you to quit the job. I'm telling you to pray for your job so that that door begins to close. We have to have an understanding that uh, open doors are there and, and the enemy tries to exploit them. And the more open doors you have, the more exploitation happens. The text begins to tell you that what, whatever is going on is not going to affect you because of Jesus. I'm a, this is powerful stuff. But you, what you recognize is Isaiah was telling you there is a plot against you. So let's look at that. Isaiah, Isaiah 8 and uh, 9, it goes, it says, Associate yourself, all you people. You shall be broken in pieces and give air, all ye of far countries. Gird yourself and you shall be broken in pieces. Gird yourself and you shall be broken in pieces. Take counsel together and it shall come to naught. Speak the word and it shall not stand for God is with us. Everybody that's been, I'm talking to y'all right now in, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. They're, because of Yeshua, because of Jesus, because of Emmanuel, God is with us, right? If God be for us, 
who can be what against us this is the text uh that isaiah wanted to present there is a concerted effort uh 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 enemies all around us trying to attack us but i don't care how much they counsel together i don't care how much they they whispering and trying to get together it cannot attack you because god is with you if you don't get anything from this text you know that emmanuel is on the premises and that premises is you because he showed up to, to cancel and spoil principalities and powers that are against you. He did that. He went down into the lower parts of the earth, into the, into the devil's realm, even spoiled principalities down there. He, everything that you could have been attacked by, he took it on his self. Well, preacher, he, he don't know what abuse felt like. Yes, he did. He was abused. He was spit on. He was, he was uh, lashed. Well, he didn't, well, he hadn't gone through what I've gone through. The devil's a lie. He's gone through everything and some. Why? Because you couldn't come back to him and say, well, Jesus, you didn't go through what I've been through. No, Jesus been through everything forward and backwards. So there would be no excuse for us not to receive his deliverance power. Good job. Let's, let's look at this in the uh, NLT. And then we'll look at it again in the Message Bible. In the NLT it says, Huddle together, you nations, and be terrified. Listen, all you distant lands, distant lands, prepare for battle, but you'll be crushed. Yes, prepare for battle, but you'll be crushed. Call your councils of war, but they will be worthless. Develop your strategies, but they will not succeed. For God is with us. It, like I said, if you don't get anything else from this text, is Emmanuel, just one word, Emmanuel, God with us. What do you mean, preacher? I'm saying that when you're going through and you don't know why you're feeling the way you're feeling, you need to just say Emmanuel, God with us. When, you, when, you, when, when challenges are financial, when, when and your relationship has been struggling, you, you, you're fighting against what you think is the enemy in your marriage or or in your children you just got to start saying you know what they plotting all this stuff but emmanuel my children are acting crazy but emmanuel wow i looked at my bank account today emmanuel and, and you start to believe the power of god with us because if god be for us who could be against us? Who's reading the soul uh, soul detox? Uh, I, I don't know if it was tomorrow's or today's, but I read ahead. Uh, and and uh, one of the texts was Psalm 27. I think that's tomorrow's. All right. And, and, and the first scriptures of Psalm 27 are, are uh, like a love song between somebody who's going through and the God that is healing and delivering us. All right? And, and, and then, then if you jump a few pages down in your Bible to Psalm 37, because the Bible tells you to fret not yourself against evildoers because they will soon be cut down and wither away. Why, why is he saying that? It's because Emmanuel. I wish I had some help today. Uh, 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 because I, what I'm saying is God is doing this right now on your behalf because he's with you always. He knows what you're going to struggle with. 
but he's there. God with us. He's like a, a, a feast of tabernacle every day. God with us. Let's, let, let's see what it says in the Message Bible. But face the facts, all you oppressors. Anybody got any oppressors? And then wring your hands. Listen to all of you far and near. Prepare for the worst and wring your hands. Yes, prepare for the worst and wring your hands. Plan and plot all you want. Nothing will come of it. Ah, I love this. Say so all your talk is mere talk. Empty words. Because when all is said and done, the last word is Emmanuel. God with us. Ooh, that is such good stuff. That is it. If you, that's the message Bible. The message Bible. The last word is Emmanuel. God with us. If you don't get, I, I, like I said, if you don't get nothing else from today's text, you got to get that Emmanuel. Go ahead. I know you got something. I'm just um, laughing because just imagine if you're out in public or you're in a workplace and you just, just start saying Emmanuel and people look and say, who is she calling? You know, you just say Emmanuel, you know, and you know you're saying God with us and you need him at that time. And people just like, well, wonder who she's calling or what have you. But you're calling on the name of the Lord saying God with us. Yeah. Matter of fact, uh, I believe that is some, that could be the, the, the code word for the church. All right. What am, what am I saying, preacher? I'm saying that there is a place where you know when you can say, how you doing? And, and, and instead of you saying, I'm doing fine, you're going to tell the truth and say, Emmanuel. What you, and what you're telling the person who asked you is, it don't matter what I'm going through. You know I'm going through some stuff. But Emmanuel, that means God is here right now. Uh, because you asked me, I'm letting you know God is with us. And your response when you say, and they say Emmanuel, say, so you know what? Emmanuel to you. Right? Because you both, now y'all in agreement because when two or more are gathered in his name, he's in the midst. And then Emmanuel becomes the truth. The Bible cannot lie. Emmanuel is your point of your breaking through, not your breaking, not your breaking up. You got to have a word that, that uh, you, of course, you know Jesus. Hallelujah. Right? But could you imagine? You could, do, you could say Emmanuel in any setting and nobody's offended. Right? You could be at work and say Jesus and somebody gets offended. Right? That Muslim worker down the street, well, they'd be like, well, you know, we, you can't really say that there. That, well, this is, you have to be, there's a separation between church and state. But if you say Emmanuel, they don't know what that means other than that's somebody's name. Right? And, and so you just call somebody out. And who's you calling? God with us. They were like, well, okay. Can't stop that. Yes, it would. Yeah. And I, I love that. It alleviates some discussion. All right? It, 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 it stopped the gossip now, don't it? Because they don't need to know all the intricate details. All you have to do is say, Emmanuel. Because let me help y'all out. People. People want some uh, want uh, to dump in dump on you, right? So so the best way to stop the dump machine is just to say Emmanuel. That means they already know. Okay, there's a couple of things there. I don't need to know all of that, but the Emmanuel is the code word that says I'm going through, but God got this, and that's it. Go ahead. Um, I was just gonna say how you were saying the different open doors that can happen. One of them being work. Well, one of the people at my job came into my room today where I work with my teammates and wrote on this little dry erase board um dear y'all please say a lot of cuss words today and so yeah it oh that's just that's just net that's just net say, say a lot of cuss words today yes yeah oh they talk 
The way we talk, like we just talking, that cursing there is just normal. I just, yeah. <laughs> That's why yesterday I told you I had to run. <laughs> on, on top of the Santana camp, uh, camera that they brought in. <laughs> in the workplace. <laughs> I come back from my lunch break and I see that and it was like I seen the devil. <laughs> that was so quick. Well, I'm going to help you out now. Here, here's, a, here's the best Not part. Not that I was it. scared, but it was just like, uh, am I really serious yeah. right now? Uh, you know, on, on, on your whiteboard in the morning, right, on the top, you just know, you don't have to say nothing else. All you got to do is say Emmanuel, right? Because uh, they won't, uh, again, they won't understand why it's up there, but you're covering your room that God is with us. I, I believe it, 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 that's the perfect code word. We could say that in any s setting and nobody be offended. It cuts all conversation out. It allows you to be free to receive and know that God's got your back. Yeah, that's the new GBFRC code word. <laughs> yes. Okay, so we're at uh, verse 11. For the Lord spake this to me with a strong hand and instructed me, I'm in the King James, instructed me that I should not walk in the ways of this people, saying, Say, see, say ye, ye not a confederacy to all them to whom shall I shall say a confederacy, neither fear ye their fear nor be afraid. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself and let him be your fear and let him be your dread. And he shall be for you for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling and a, for a rock of offense to both the house of Israel, for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Let's see what that says in the, in the NLT again. Uh, so it reads a little easier for us. It says a call to trust the Lord. I, I, I come to tell you that saints... All the talking that Isaiah has done in the first seven chapters. <laughs> if you don't trust the Lord by then, that's just in seven chapters. He's still got a whole bunch more, right? I think he's got 40, 59 left. He's calling us. How many people know that God always calls him, us to trust us, trust him? Right? That's the true sign of worship to God that you could trust him we get out of the Egypt what's the first thing we start to do murmur complain right he parts the Red Sea we get to the other side what's he do what we do murmur and complain where's the manna where's the Lord of mercy this God just took you out of slavery God is taking you out of slavery Right? Drowned all your captors. Wow, at least when we let, when we was in Egypt, we were fed and we had this and we had just trust him. Why is it that the people of God at every issue that comes to life begin to lose trust? in the one God, or the one true God that has done everything that has promised us. In the book of Isaiah, book of Exodus, in the New Testament, who keeps telling us to have faith and believe, to trust. Proverbs, trust in the Lord. In all your ways. And he'll direct your paths. Why is it so hard for people of God who know, supposed to know the word, to trust in the same God that delivered them? Right? Some of us used to be alcoholics. Some of us used to be addicts. Some of us used to be uh, in the world sinning on a daily basis. God saved us. Delivered us. Gave us breakthrough. Took us from poverty to prosperity in life. And then things happen a little tough. We throw it all away. 
and we try to do it our own way. I, I, I don't understand. Why is it that God has to continue to chastise us to trust him? Let's see what it says. The Lord has given me a strong warning not to think like everyone else does. <laughs> Man. That. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Emmanuel, right? Yeah. Look at that. Off top. What's he say? He gave me a strong warning. Not to think like everybody else does. Neighbor, say, neighbor, stop thinking like everybody else. And just say, Emmanuel. Yeah, we got this. We have to get outside of ourselves and just trust God. Right? If God's word has told you that he's going to heal you and deliver you, right? Trust him. He's going to do it. Stop putting them on a microwave clock. You know, microwave clock, right? The, the microwave clock flashes, right? Especially when the power goes out, it's flashing all the time. But uh, it, it's, it takes to cook 20% of the time for something that really cooks uh, the whole time, right? You cook a turkey in a microwave or a turkey breast in a microwave, right? It don't taste the same. It don't have enough seasoning on it. It never... Uh, it, it, it never really uh, cook. It never cooks right. It doesn't brown right. You know, it's just in the microwave. But that's what we want because it's fast. Right? I ask my boys to cook pizza. They cook it. In, they're, they'll cook it in the microwave. Yeah, they'll cook the pizza rolls, all that stuff that's supposed to be hard and got a little crisp to it. Right? They'll cook it in the microwave. Why? Because they don't want. They're not patient enough to wait for the real stuff. I I, I come to tell you that. In this day and age, the millennial generation, the ages 18 to 30, 31, right now is uh, Christianity has gone down in that age group because things of God don't move fast enough for them. Their patience limit is next to none and next left town right we have to instill in us faith and patience the faith to believe god and trust god the patience to wait on it all right the real victory is not in receiving what god gave you the real victory is waiting for it to manifest because God has already promised you the victory. All right? It's us that get out of line and start uh, checking on God's progress and, and doing everything that we can do in, in, in order to receive it because uh, uh, we have to have it faster than, we, than it's available to us. And, and that's why God gave Isaiah a strong warning. Don't think like the world thinks. Stop doing that. God, don't put God on no time clock. Don't punch God's clock for him. He don't need your help. He don't work a nine to five. He works an eternity. Yeah. Y'all think God, I mean, not y'all, but the, the, some people in the body of Christ think God work a 40 hour work week. They take nights and weekends off. No, he's there. Emmanuel, God is with us. Don't call everything a conspiracy like they do and don't live in dread of what frightens them. Make the Lord of heaven's army holy in, in your life. Come on now. Oh, this is so good. He is the one you should fear. He is the one you should make your, that should make you tremble. Tremble. Man, if you have a reverential fear for the Lord, everything you do would be protecting you against in, uh, infuriating God. Right? The, 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 the reverential fear for God corrects mistakes that you'll make before you make them. Why? Because you know what? 
I can't tell that, that guy off. Why? Because that would make God angry at me. I can't write that bounce check because that would make God angry at me. I can't cut that guy off on the highway because that would make God angry at me. That would displease him. The Bible tells us without faith, it's impossible to please God. So if you live in a faithless society, you don't even have fear for God. Because you'd be willing to displease God with your lack of faith. I have a little, uh, I don't know if you've been in my office. If you've been in my office, you got to visit it. I promise you. I have a, a little button on my, um, uh, on my desk. And you hit it, and it says, uh, your lack of faith disturbs me. And it sounds like Darth Vader. Yeah. Why? Yeah, you just hit it. Just hit it. it just, you got just, just to go hit it just to hear it. All right? And, and why you do that, it, it, it just it reminds you that you, you don't please God when you're walking in fear. You, you walk in, you're the only person you should fear is I find your lack of faith disturbing. Because the only one you should be fearing is God. And, and, and the reverential fear, which is different than just scared. All right? Yeah, uh, reverential fear means I just don't want to break any one of his rules. Not not because not because uh, it, the help it'll damage. I don't want to damage my relationship with Jesus. Right? I want I want to be able to say Emmanuel. But if I'm always breaking the rules, or 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 breaking covenant with him, or or changing the our relationship. How can I say God is with us or God is with me if every time I look around, I'm doing something that he would would he be offended by? But we don't think of it that way. Could you imagine? You, you ask God for a breakthrough financially, but you're robbing him. Right? It don't even make sense. But people do it all the time. They're not tithing. They don't make offering. They, they lose their job and then they ask God for, please help me find a job, God. Help me get this job. And, and, and then uh, you have broken covenant with God. You, you had no reverential fear when it came on Sundays and Wednesdays to pay your tithes. Then you're asking the same God that you've been robbing to, to, get, you to get you a job so you can rob him some more. <laughs> Do that even make sense? He, a, a thief wouldn't even do that. But we do it because we don't have the reverential fear of the Lord. Let's keep reading. It's good stuff. He will keep you safe, but to Israel and Judah, this is verse 14, he will be a stone that makes, you, makes people stumble, a rock that makes them fall. And for the people of Jerusalem, he will be a trap and a snare. Many will stumble and fall, never to rise again. They will be snared and captured. Preserve the teaching of God. Entrust his instructions to those who follow me. I will wait for the Lord, who has turned away from the descendants of Jacob. I will put my hope in him. I, I, the Bible tells us to trust no man. Right? Why? Because man is fallible. God is infallible. And I, I, I learned this a long time ago. And I tell prophetess all the time. And she probably get tired of me saying this. People are always going to be people. What I'm saying is people by nature 
and, and the body of Christ might be different, but people by nature are uh, self selfish instead of selfless in by nature, right? What I so I always say, people are gonna be people. People are gonna do things that you would think is not is not becoming somebody in the body of Christ, but it don't shock me because they still people. Yeah, it, it, that's what I'm saying. Even his disciples, right? Even even uh, 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 Judas Iscariot, right? We know that he was walking with God for thirty. 30, we'll say $30, we'll say 30 coins, right? 30 pieces of silver, right? He, he turned over the Messiah, right? Because what? People going to be people. There's always, always something that's going to happen. And, and I say all that to say is, so then when you trust in that, that said person or people, you are bound at some point to be disappointed. It may take you a long time to get that disappointment, but there's going to be a one point that, some, that, that they may disappoint you. Now, if they truly been converted by the body of Christ and they walk in the victories of God and the salvation of God, they, they fight so hard that they, you'll see them gain victory in the area of selfishness. And they will become selfless. So much so that uh, they, victory will last the test of time in your partnership with God. All right? But very few people like that. As we get stronger and stronger in the, in the word, we get like that. All right? So that's where God talks about the remnant. Look to your neighbor and say the remnant. The remnant. remnant. Right? The reason why the remnant, the remnant is that special piece. All right. It's not a mistake. You know, you ever go to a carpet store, they tell you about the remnant. The remnant was that odd cut. No. The remnant is that special piece. Look to your neighbor and say special piece. That uh, looks like the original so much that we, we put it to the side so I could keep looking back at it. That's what you guys are. These people at Glory Bible Fellowship International Church, you are so selfless. That you're the remnant of God. The Bible tells you in, the, in chapter 11 that God makes a highway out of no way for his remnant. He, he already he's divided a plan for you to escape the ills of this world. Why? Because you look like him. Spiritual mother way back when, she would look at me in the face and say, you look like God. And I didn't, I, you know, you, you get humbled by that, right? Yeah, I'm like, what are you talking about? I just, I'm just learning this stuff, right? And, and, and what she was saying was, you look like the remnant, that special piece that God put aside for future use. And I wasn't leading no congregation at the time. And, but God had been talking to her about me. Why? Because that remnant was then going to be put to work. I got about five minutes there, okay? I and, and the children of the Lord has given me serve as sign and warning to Israel for the Lord's heaven army who dwell in his temple on Mount Zion. Someone may say to you, let's ask the medium and those who consult the spirits of the dead. And the Bible in the King James, I think it says necromancers. Familiar spirits. With their whispering and muttering, they will tell us what to do. But shouldn't people ask God for guidance? Should the, the living seek guidance from the dead? These are powerful questions. Stop, yeah, stop dealing with them, them psychics and, the, and, and the, don't get your palm red and, 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 and talking to witches and talking to warlocks. Y'all need to be, if y'all believe the body of Christ, if y'all are truly the remnant, the only people you should be, the only person you should be talking to is uh, God's leaders and God himself, right? 
And I'm not talking to you in the in the Catholic sense that you got to go behind a curtain and talk to the priest and the priest give you some absolution uh, from killing somebody. I'm talking about uh, uh, you talking to a pastor, talking to prophetess, talking to God himself about the things that you're dealing with. Shouldn't you be seeking guidance from God instead of seeking guidance from the dead? I love that because uh, it reminds me of when the angel was uh, when the angel was at the uh, tomb. He said, "Why you look for the living amongst the dead?" <laughs> the angel was telling you, "The God you serve, he's not there. He's alive. So stop looking for him in dead places. Y'all not talking to me. Stop looking for him in dead places. The, he's not. Stop, stop looking for him at places where Ichabod's written across the door. You have to look for God where God is. He's alive. God is in a movement. God is not a, sta a stationary uh, subject. God is a movement. And I believe that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There's liberty. And right now I feel so free. I, don't, I can't explain it. I'm, every time I think about where I'd be right about now. Over the, and how free I am. I said, who the sun sets free? It's free indeed. I, I just feel the liberty of God right now. If you know what I'm know, just, just raise your hand. Just tell God, say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. I feel the freedom. I don't look for you in dead places. I feel you alive. Yeah. I, uh, what's the song right said? God's not dead. He's surely alive. He's living on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, yeah, I love that. Woo, ain't that something? I, I could be a songwriter one day. I promise you that. Yeah. And I'm not prophesying to myself. I'm just going to write it down. Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. It says, look to God's instructions and teachings. People who contradict his word are completely in the dark. Man, we can go. I could just go and preach Isaiah 8 and 20 by itself. It said, look to God's instructions and teachings. People who contradict his word are completely in the dark. He's saying, it, it, what, it, trust God's word and his teachings and somebody's actions to tell you if they trust God's word and his teaching. Yes, I'm, I'm a man of God. Then why are you cheating on your wife? <laughs> they will go from one place to another, weary and hungry. Those are people in the dark. And because they are hungry, they will rage and curse the king and their God. Those people in the dark. Uh, 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 I, try, I, I said something to the prophetess, I think it was a couple days ago. I said, as much as a zebra wants to be a horse, the stripes always give it away. <laughs> He's still a zebra. And we have to recognize that no matter how hard them, them, those people that are gut worldly try to look like they belong in the household of faith, eventually their stripes are going to show. They can try and try. They can fake it. They might even know how to lay out. They got it down. But eventually, they stripes going to show. Did you get that on video? We'll cut that piece after. Nah, nah, no, <laughs> yeah. What they they took the blue pill. I don't know. I don't remember which one it was. Which <laughs> Look to God's instruction and teaching people who contradict his word are completely in the dark. They will go from one place to another, weary and hungry. And because they are hungry, they will rage and curse their king and their God. They will look up to heaven and down at the earth. But wherever they look, 
there will be trouble and anguish and dark despair. They will be thrown out into darkness. Uh, I just uh, trust, uh, go back to the third. Why not just trust in God so that you don't have to flounder in the darkness? You ever try to look around in the darkness? It takes so long for you to get anywhere. You bump into everything and you, you always get hurt fumbling around in the darkness. But had you just took time to turn on the light, how easy it would have been for you to get where you were trying to go. Right? It's simple. Stop hanging around with people of darkness. Because two things will happen. They'll dim your light or they'll snuff it out completely. Now you could try and shine light on them and hope and help them. But after a while, if, it, if, if they don't see the light, you got to move on to somebody else that will see the light. We toil around in the darkness way too long. Guess what? It toils around on us. You know, the old saying was, if you lay down with dogs, you'll get up with fleas. Any questions about the lesson? This was, uh, every time I think that uh, I get the short end of these uh, scriptures, right? Because Isaiah, like, probably now prophets probably going to end up with Isaiah 11. I ain't going to talk about it. But, uh, uh, and Isaiah 9, we already know is a powerful text, right? I'm so blessed that I get these other texts that I read so much, but I, you don't know, really study so in depthy until you don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because she's uh, the, the, the uh, father's name is Jesse. See how it works out? I'm going to give you the first half. I'll take the second half. I got that one down of Isaiah 11. Uh, any questions again? I, I, I Hopefully you've been blessed by the lesson today. It blessed me. Uh, when I was studying for it, I enjoyed it. And uh, I thank you guys for coming out today. Uh, Prophet